We now have that link established with our friend Dick Morris, who joins us to analyze both politics and policy. Dick, it's great to have you back on America's Forum. Well, J.D., it's great to be here, and I'm just hoping that my face can fit on an iPhone. <laughs> well, it's not only your great visage, Dick, but your expansive intellect that we okay. depend on here. Speaking of intellectual exercises, commencement yesterday at West Point, the president offering, <clears throat> I'll put it diplomatically now, some curious remarks as to redefining American foreign policy. Your take on that commencement address. Well, I think first the political motivation behind it was to mention the word commander-in-chief as often as possible and to have the cadets show deference to him. Uh, he's being clobbered over foreign policy and national security. And uh, a president, people judge a president's character when they judge his performance in foreign policy. Domestic policy has so many different variables and so many different actors that it's hard to get a read on a president's, popu a president's personality and character from domestic policy. But with foreign policy, the ball's squarely in his court. Uh, we learn that uh, Nixon is, is uh, creative uh, and aggressive. We learn that Bush 43 is stubborn. Uh, we learn that Bush 41 is principled. Uh, so that we learn that Clinton is distracted. And when you come to Obama, we're learning that he's weak. Uh, in the speech, he said that the military and West Point was the backbone of our strength. Well, the problem is he doesn't have a backbone. Well, let's talk more about that, Dick. And, and uh, another euphemism we could use is someone who is evolving. For example, yesterday in the commencement address, the president spoke specifically about American exceptionalism. Let's take a listen. I believe in American exceptionalism just as I suspect that the Brits believe in British exceptionalism and the Greeks believe in Greek exceptionalism. Actually, that, that, is, uh, that is from the NATO speech in 2009. We I wanted to offer that, that yeah. we wanted to offer that in contrast to his comments yesterday. At any rate, the gist of it is this. The president yesterday says, I believe in American exceptionalism. What we heard just a second ago is that cut from the NATO uh, summit, what, what is that now, uh, four years ago, uh, is it euphemistic to say our president is evolving on foreign policy? Well, I, I think that he, I don't think he's evolving. I think he's faking it. Uh, I think he knows that that comment really undermined him with people. Uh, and uh, the, the fact of the matter is that to compare us to any other nation, Greek or, or, or British or anything, uh, is just wrong. The United States is the un indispensable nation in the world both because of our size, our power, our principles, our ideology, and our commitment to freedom. And uh, I just don't think Obama shares that perspective. I think he disagrees with it from his fundamental core. But the, the main thing that struck me about his speech is he's giving a speech now when the United States is in full retreat on every front throughout the world. Uh, Russia is on the verge of seizing the Ukraine, having already seized Crimea and half of Georgia. Uh, the Eastern Europe doesn't know if they can depend on the United States and, and are increasingly nervous about it. Uh, the Al-Qaeda has now spread uh, from the mountains of Pakistan and Afghanistan to Yemen, Somalia, Mauritania, Mali, uh, Nigeria, Libya, and Syria, and Iraq. And uh, after withdrawing from Iraq, we're finding that uh, that the uh, al-Qaeda now is in control of a large part of that country. And uh, China is becoming increasingly aggressive, threatening war against Japan and against Vietnam over naval disputes. Uh, the world is, in a, is, is, is totally is a so much more dangerous place. And everybody cites the same reason, Obama's weakness. Well, let's and let's let's. That speech let's, was essentially a defensive weakness. And, but it's interesting. You talk about him being in retreat in terms of foreign policy. When we come back here domestically, especially in domestic living arrangements, the president is very aggressive now in support of gay marriage. John Bachman just told us about Orrin Hatch saying he believes that gay marriage will become the law of the land. Also, my old House colleague, Pennsylvania Congressman Charlie Dent 
says life is too short to worry about the issue. The paradox of Obama with about a minute left, Dick, and we see here what Orrin Hatch had to say, but I'm interested in what you have to say, Dick Morris, about this Republican retreat on a key social issue. Well, th there was a poll out yesterday by Gallup that I thought was great. They said that on economic issues, the Republican Party has a 22-point lead, but on social issues, or actually conservatives, have a 22-point lead. Uh, and on social policy, their lead is down to four points. Uh, the, the public, I think, uh, has decided that gay marriage is okay. I think they've accepted it. I think that the gay community has worked very hard to influence TV shows and movies uh, and uh, people coming out. And they've created an environment in which people are accepting gay marriage as, as the norm. And we'll have to leave it right there, Dick Morris. As always, we appreciate your insights and look forward to visiting with you again. When we come back, our daily intelligence brief from the man with whom I served in the Congress of the United States, the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Holstrom. That is straight ahead on America's Forum.